Probability and area. Using area to find probability is similar to using length to find probability. So here we have a situation where point B in region A is chosen at random. The probability that point B is in region C is the ratio of the area of region C to the ratio of the area of region A. And we have that shown here. Again, the probability of B in region C is equal to the area of region C over the area of region A. So now what if we give actual numbers to the areas? What if we find the probability first of the area of A, and let's say that it equals 24 inches squared. And then the area of region C is equal to 3 inches squared. So the probability that B is in region C is that area of region C, 3 inches squared over the, prob the area of region A, which is 24 inches squared. But that can reduce to be 1 over 8. So the probability is 1 eighth. You could also say it's 0.13 or 13 percent. Here's another example where we have a triangle inscribed in a square. Point N is the squ in the square is selected at random. What is the probability that N lies in the shaded region, which is the triangle? So step one is we have to find the area of each region. So first let's find the area of the shaded region. So it's the area of a triangle. So that's going to give us the formula 1 half base times height. Because this triangle is inscribed in the square, we have a base here of 4, and we have a height also of 4. So it would be 1 half times 4 times 4, so our area would be 8. So it would be 8 inches squared for the shaded region. Now we have the area of the square. Well, the area of a square is its side squared, which in this case we're given is 4. So it would be 4 squared, which is 16. So the area of the square is 16 inches squared. So finding the probability now that the point N is in that shaded region would be the shaded region's area over the area of the square. So that would be 8 over 16 which reduces to 1 half. So we have 1 half, or we can write it as 0.5, or 50%. Now if we think about this, 50% would mean that you have half the chance, right? Half the, the probability is 1 half, and if we look at when we drew our height of our triangle, that diagonal is cutting the square directly in half, and we're shading half of each side, so it's a quarter and a quarter is one half. So this probability matches with our diagram. We also can look at the formula of an area of a triangle versus a square. You have one half base times height where side squared is essentially just saying base times height. So one half of the formula is going to make your probability one half anyway. So no matter how you think about it, you do have that probability of one half in this case. Find the probability that a point chosen at random in the trapezoid with a height of four will lie in either of the shaded regions. So here's our trapezoid, and in order to find the probability here, we're going to need to find the area of the shaded region and put it over the area of the total figure. So first, let's try and find the area of the shaded region. So the area of the shaded region is going to be these two triangles over here on either side of the trapezoid. So first, let's find the height of or the area of the first triangle. Let's call this triangle one. So triangle one, we know the area of a triangle is going to be one half base times height. We can see the base is four, the height is four, so that would be one half four times four, 
which is going to give us 8. So the area of this triangle is 8. Now let's try and find the area of the second triangle. We know the height is 4 since it's the same height along the whole trapezoid here. And we can see it's the other side of the rectangle. Now here, this base, we have a whole entire base of 16. We've already used 4 units and 7 units, so 4 plus 7 is 11. And 16 minus 11 means this is a base of 5. So now that we have the second triangle's base and height, we can say the second triangle is still having the formula of 1 half base times height, but we now have 1 half times 5 times 4, which will give us an area of 10. If we now combine or have the sum of these two shaded regions, the area of the shaded is going to be 8 plus 10, or 18. So that will give us the area of the shaded regions. Now we need the area of the total region. Well, the total region, we're told, is a trapezoid. So the area of the trapezoid, we can use the formula of adding the bases, dividing by 2, and multiplying by the height. So we have our two bases. We have 7 and 16. So 7 plus 16 over 2 times the height of 4. So that's going to give us 7 plus 16 is 23. Divided by 2 times 4, which is going to give us an area. Oh, an area. Let me put my little T since we're talking about the area of a trapezoid. If my marker would cooperate. Okay. Of 46. So we have the area of the shaded is 18, the area of the whole trapezoid is 46, so the probability that n is going to lie in the shaded region is going to be that area of the shaded region, 18, over the area of the trapezoid, 46. 18 over 46 is going to give us 9 over 23. Or we can think of that as about 0.39 or 39%. A point in the figure to the right is chosen at random. Find the probability to the nearest percent that the point lies in the shaded region. This probability will be found by finding the area of the shaded region and putting it over or dividing it by the area of the entire region. So first, let's look at the area of the shaded region. The shaded region is a triangle, so we need our formula for a triangle's area, one-half base times height. We then need the base and the height. The base given to us of this triangle is 16. Now, the height is not given to us, but we do have it. this triangle is within the rectangle, which we do have the height of the rectangle is 10. And we can see that the triangles are formed by the diagonals, which are going to bisect right in the middle, making this height going up to 5. So it would be 1 half 16 times 5, which is going to give us 40. So now we have to find the area of the entire figure, which is a rectangle. So the area of the rectangle is going to be base times height, which we're given a base of 16, a height of 10. So the area of the rectangle 16 times 10 is 160. The probability is now putting one over the other, putting the area of the shaded over the area of the rectangle. So we have 40 over 160. This probability reduces to 1 fourth, which is also 0.25 or 25%. Here's another example. We have a point in the figure to the right is chosen at random. Find the probability to the nearest percent that the point lies in the shaded region. 
So this probability will be found by finding the area of the shaded region, these four triangles over here, four right triangles in each corner of what looks like a square. So and we would put that over the total area of the square. So we're first going to find the area of the shaded region, which is going to be, like I said, these four right triangles here. So these four right triangles, we have one half base times height, but then we would multiply by four since there are four of them. Now the base and the height, let's see if we can find. Well, since this is a square, this is a 10 by 10. So let's look at this triangle here we would have the triangle's height goes halfway up the side length of the square, so that would be half of 10, would give us a height of five. And since this is an isosceles triangle, we would also have a base of five. So that would give us one half, five times five, times four, for the area of the shaded region to come out to be 50. And our unit, we have millimeters squared. Now we need the area of the total figure, which is a square, which the area formula is side squared, and we're told that the side is 10 millimeters. So 10 squared gives us a total area of 100 millimeters squared. The probability, we're then going to put one over the other. We're going to put the area of the shaded 50 over the area of 50 millimeters over the area of the total 100 which is then going to give us a probability of one half. We have one half we can also look at it as 0.5 or as the nearest percent 50 percent. So you have a 50 percent chance of having that point lie in the shaded region of the square. A dart is thrown at random at this dartboard. If the dart hits the board, find the probability to the nearest percent that it will land in the shaded region. So here we have this figure. It looks like a rectangle and it is enclosed by two semicircles. So we need to find the area of the shaded region and put it over the area of the total figure in order to find this probability. So first let's try and find the area of the shaded regions. So we have two half circles that are going to have the same radius. So it's essentially one whole circle cut into two pieces in the figure. So our area of a circle is pi r squared. Now a semicircle we would have to multiply by one half, but we have two of them. So multiplying by a half and two cancel each other out. So we just have our pi r squared. Now we need the radius. So the radius is going to be half of the diameter, which here the length of our, the height of our rectangle is the diameter of the two semicircles. So it's the diameter of the circle. So halfway, half of 12 would give us six. So the radius is six, and we would then have pi six squared, making the area of the shaded region 36 pi inches squared. So now we need the area of the total figure. Now we already found the area of the two semicircles as 36 inches, a uh, 36 pi inches squared. So we have that amount. We just need now the area of that rectangle that was in the middle. So the area of the rectangle is going to be base times height, which we're given the base and the height as 12 times six. So the area of the rectangle is going to be 72 inches squared. So the area of the total is then going to be adding the two. We would then have 36 pi plus 72 inches squared. So that's the area of the total. So we want for probability we want the area of the shaded to be over the area of the total. So that would give us 36 pi inches squared over 36 pi plus 72 inches squared. Now we can clean this up a bit if we factor out 
36 from the bottom and reduce, that would give us pi over pi plus 2 as our probability. Now pi over pi plus 2, uh, that number isn't the best way to look at the probability in this case, especially they want nearest percent, so let's divide and we can say that this is about 0.61 for 61% to be our final answer. That's the probability that in this case, a dart will land in the shaded region. Here's a different example now where we have a circle and some sectors cut out of that circle or shaded. So a point in the figure to the right is chosen at random. Find the probability to the nearest percent that the point lies in the shaded region. So we need to find the area of the shaded region and then find the area of the total figure and then put them over each other to find the probability. So first let's find the area of the shaded regions. In this case, the shaded region is a sector of this circle. So we have our formula that that's going to be N, which is the angle that the sector is cut at, over 360 times pi r squared. And there are two of these at the same angle, so we're going to multiply that by two. So we are given that the angle this sector is cut at is 50, so that'll be 50 over 360 times pi, well r is the radius, which we're given is 30, so 30 squared. We can simplify this to then be 2 times 125 pi, 50 divided by 360 times 900, which we can then say the area of the shaded region is going to be 250 pi with our units of centimeters squared. We then need the area of the whole circle of the total figure which the area of a circle is just regular pi r squared. We have the same radius, so it's going to be pi 30 squared. So that'll give us 900 pi. The probabil probability, like I said, is now putting the area of the shaded over the area of the total to give us 250 pi. centimeters squared over 900 pi centimeters squared, which we could definitely clean up to be 5 over 18, which is equal to 0.28. For our final answer, the probability to be 28%. Now let's look at an example with concentric circles or what we usually look at a dartboard. So assume that a dart you throw will land on the one foot square dart board and is equally likely to land at any point on this board. Find the probability of hitting each of the blue, yellow, and red regions. The radii of the concentric circles are 1, 2, and 3 inches. So here, the probability, let's look first at the blue circle. So the blue shaded region is this circle here, so the probability is going to be the area of that shaded region over the area of the total dartboard. So the area of the shaded region is going to be the area of a circle where we have pi r squared, which this concentric circle we're told has a radius of 1. So we have the area of the circle of the blue shaded region is going to be pi and r squared is 1 squared or just pi. The area of the total is going to be the total dartboard which is a 12 by 12 or a 1 foot square. So that's going to be 12 times 12 base times height. So that will give us 144. So pi inches, 144 inches, so the probability is going to be pi over 144 inches squared, which then reduces or simplifies to about 0 0.02, making the probability 2%. So there's a 2% that the dart will land in the blue circle. 
Now let's look at the probability of the yellow. So we have to find the sh area of the yellow shaded region, which isn't as easy as the blue because the blue is just a regular circle, but now the yellow is a circle with the shaded blue cut out of it. So we need to find the area of the yellow, which good thing it's still a circle. We have a radius now of two. So the whole entire yellow circle would be pi two squared, which is four pi. But we need to subtract the area of the blue circle, which from the previous problem we found was pi. So four pi minus pi is going to give us the area of the shaded region as three pi. We can now put this over the area of the total, which we found from the last problem to still be 144. So we would have three pi over 144 inches squared in both cases as our unit to give us a decimal of 0 0.07 or 7%. Now we have the probability of the red. This is the same idea, very similar to the yellow, where we have to take into account the different circles that are being cut out of it. So first, the area of the total red circle is just going to be pi r squared, where the radius in this case, we're told, is three. So we have pi times three squared, which is going to give us nine pi. But we have to subtract the yellow and the blue, which we can just represent with the total yellow circle, which we found in the last example to be four pi. So that would be nine pi minus four pi, which gives us the area of the shaded red region to be five pi. Now let's put five pi inches squared over 144, that's still that total dartboard, that total square foot, to give us 0.11 or 11%. So we can kind of see 2%, 7%, 11% as each concentric circle comes out, you go further and further, you have a higher chance of hitting it. So you have the smallest or least chance of hitting the middle. That's why in darts, you're always, that's what you're aiming for. So that's why it's the hardest. A point in the figure is chosen at random. Find the probability that the point lies in the shaded region. Now here, we have the shaded region being the outer circle and the inner circle, and we have the middle circle cut out. So we need the area of these shaded regions combined, the sum, and then put it over the total area to find the probability. So let's find the area of the shaded region. So first we have the smaller circle. Area of a circle is given by pi r squared, so first for the shaded region, we would have pi radius here is three, so three squared. So that would be the first shaded region would be nine pi, the tiny little circle in the middle. That was the easier one. We now need the shaded area of the outer circle, but we have all these pieces cut out. It's being interrupted. So first we need the total area that would be this shaded region if it wasn't cut out. So let's look there. We have the area of that would be, well, the area of the total, which we do need anyway for this problem. So let's calculate the area of the total with the total radius going from the total center all the way out we have three plus two plus four, so that is going to be nine centimeters. So we would have pi times nine squared, which is gonna give us the area of the total to be 81 pi. So we need that for later as the total area, but we still need the shaded area of the outer. So that's gonna be the total area minus the white or the non-shaded area so we need the area of that littler medium circle. We'll say M for the medium circle. So that is gonna be pi, and we have a radius of three plus two. This radius is going to be five. So it would be five squared, pi five squared, to give us 25 pi. 
So now we have, we would have 81 pi minus 25 pi as that, as that outer shaded region. So the area of the shaded region is going to be 81 pi minus 25 pi, but then we have to remember to add back in the smaller circle of 9 pi. That will give us 65 pi for the area of the shaded region, 81 minus 25 plus 9. Now putting that over the total that we found before, 81 pi and 65 pi over it, we would have the probability to be 65 pi over 81 pi, which will reduce to give us 0.8 for a probability, an answer of 80%. You have an 80% chance of hitting one of these shaded regions, so it's pretty high. It is most of the figure. Now here's the different example from the rest. We have a dart still being thrown at random at the dartboard. Now here's our dartboard in this example to the right. If the dart hits the board, find the probability to the nearest percent that it will land in the shaded region. However, we can see this example is different because there are no measurements given of this dartboard. But we can have a hint that if the dimensions aren't given, let's create our own. And even numbers are good numbers to choose. So here we have a circle inscribed in a square. So I'm going to randomly make up a length for this square. Even numbers are good, so let's say this has a length of 4. So I still, to find the probability, need to find the area of the shaded over the area of the total. So the area of the shaded is a circle. So we have pi r squared. Now because I gave this a length of 4, that means I have a radius of half of that, so a radius of 2. So I would have pi 2 squared, or the area of the shaded, to be 4 pi. So now I need to find the area of the total. I gave it a side length of four, the area of a square is side squared. So my area of the total would be four squared, which is 16. So now if I'm finding my fraction for the probability, that would give me the area of the shaded four pi over the area of the total 16, which I can reduce to pi over four. So the probability is pi over 4, which is equal to about 0.79 to give us an answer of 79%. So here we now have the same scenario where we're finding a dart thrown at random at this board, but the board is not given any measurements. And again, we want to find the probability that if the dart hits the board to the nearest percent, what is that probability it will land in the shaded region here? Now this dartboard is a square with four semicircles. So again, you want to, if they're not giving you measurements, you want to make them up. You want to pick any random numbers, even numbers are best. So I'm going to randomly give this square a side of four. So now we can say that the area of the shaded is that square. So it's going to be side squared, which I gave was four. So four squared is going to be 16. So the area of the shaded region is going to be 16. Now we have to find the area of the total. Well, the square is a part of the total, so we know that this is going to be 16 units squared, but we need to find all of the semicircles, the four semicircles. So the area of a semicircle is going to be 1 half pi r squared, but we have four of them, so we'll multiply that by four to find the area of those semicircles, of all four of them. So now we have, <clears throat> we have four times one half pi, well the radius of the semicircle, if I gave the side length of the square four, then half of it would be two. So that would be two squared. So that would give me four, times 1 half is 2, times 4 is 8 pi. So the area of all the semicircles, 
1, 2, 3, 4 is going to be 8 pi. But we want the area of the total figure is going to be the sum of the two. So we would have those semicircles, 8 pi plus 16, the area of the middle square. Now that's, the, that's all the areas, but we need the probability. So the probability is now going to be the area of the shaded 16 over the area of the total, 8 pi plus 16. And we can reduce that we, if we factor out an 8 in the denominator that reduces to 2 over 2 plus pi, which is about 0.39% to give us a final percentage of 39%. And it would be cool if you didn't choose four, you should still get 39%. Whatever number you choose, if you chose six, eight, 10, 12, any number, you should still get that probability because of the way the proportions are with probability of the shaded to the total area. So try it and see if you still get 39%. A dart is thrown at random at the dartboard to the right. If the dart hits the board, find the probability to the nearest percent that it will land in the shaded region. So there are no numbers on this dartboard, so we're going to have to make them up. There's no dimensions given. So I'm going to randomly choose. I keep going with four, so let's maybe this time I'll go with six. So I'm going to choose that the side length of this square is six. So we need to find the area of the shaded region, the shaded triangle in the square, and then put that over the total area to find the probability. So the area of the total, since we just said it's a square, is side squared. In this case, I just gave it a measurement of six. So let's say six squared makes the area of the total figure 36. Now we need the area of the shaded. The shaded is a triangle, so we have our formula of one half base times height. So now we need the base and the height of the triangle. Since this is a square, we can almost flip it over and think that if this is a side of 6, this is a side of 6, which is going to be the base of our triangle. So we have a base of 6. The height isn't given, but the triangle is formed using the diagonals. So it would be half of 6, which would give us a height of 3. So we have 1 half 6 times 3, 1 half of 18, makes the area of the shaded region 9. The probability is that area of the shaded 9 over the area of the total to be 9 over 36, which reduces to 1 fourth, 0.25, and gives us an answer that the probability is 25%. And this pictorially makes sense for us since there are four equal triangles cutting into the square. So it almost makes sense that there's a 1 fourth. You have one of those four triangles. So you can almost visually see that our answer makes sense, whether you chose six as the side length, four, eight, whatever. So whatever you want to choose. But it just visually these area problems start to make sense with probability as well. In the fundraiser game shown below, players toss darts at a board to try to get them into one of the holes. The diameter of the center hole is eight inches and the diameter of each of the four corner holes is five inches. The board itself is a 20 inch by 30 inch rectangle. Find the probability that a toss start will go through the indicated holes. So in order to find the probability, it's almost like the hole is a shaded region in a figure. So we can find the area of the shaded region or the area of the hole and then put it over the area of the entire board and that will give us our probability. First, let's find the area of the entire board because we're going to need that for all four of our choices. It's always what we're comparing it to. So the area of the total board, which is a rectangle, is going to be base times height. And we're told in the information that the base and the height is a 20 inch by 30 inch. So we have 20 times 30, which will give us 600 inches squared. So that's the total area that we're always going to compare to. That will be the denominator of all our probabilities. So now let's look at one at a time. Let's first look at the center hole. So we need the area of the center hole or center circle over the area of the total, so over that 600 inches. So the area of any circle is going to be 1 half pi r squared. 
or not not one half that's a triangle but just sorry the area of a circle is pi r squared doing a lot of examples today so pi r squared so here we need the radius of the big circle we're told the diameter of the big circle of the center hole is eight so its radius would be half of that so it would be four so it would be pi times four squared which is 16 pi or pi 16 16 pi but more importantly the probability is going to be 16 pi over 600 which is going to reduce to 2 pi over 75 which is 0.8 approximately 0 0.08 or 8 percent so the probability of getting the dart on the big circle is going to be 8 percent now we have b is saying well any corner so any corner circle are these tiny four circles here so any corner means we're looking at the area of all four of them so the diameter of one of them is five so the radius of one of the four circles would be 2.5 would be that in half so we need the area of those four circles or the area of one of the circles of any of the circles would be pi times 2.5 squared so that would give us 6.25 pi is the area of one of these circles but any corner means we need to multiply that by four because you can have any of those so that would give us 25 pi if we multiply by four so any corner we'll do the work over here the probability is going to be 25 pi over 600 which reduces to pi over 24 which is approximately 0.13 making that answer 13 percent so right now you have a higher chance of hitting any of the corner holes than you do the center hole it's 13 versus 8. then just the top right or left we're still looking at the two smaller circles so we're still looking at 6.25 but now we're only going to multiply by 2 because you're only looking at those two holes so we would have 12.5 pi if we're multiplying by 2 so we're going to make more room here because I've run out so we have the probability is going to be 2 times 6.25 so 12.5 pi still over the total board of 600 which gives us approximately or gives us exactly pi over 48 which is approximately 0 0.07 so we have 7% so right now that's actually the least chance you have of hitting we have 7% versus 13 versus 8 so that would be a really hard bet to make finally let's see the bottom left so the bottom left is just one of the circles the yellow circle so that's just one, the 6.25. So the probability would be 6.25 pi over 600, which reduces to pi over 96, which is approximately 0 0.03 for 3%. So now we have the probability, just a summary of the center hole would be 8%. Any corner would be 13%. Just the top right or left would be 7% and the bottom left would be 3%. Now the darts hitting there are random, so these are your probabilities. So if you are playing a game, that's actually, you. everybody would think that the middle would be the hardest to get into when in fact it would just be one of your corners. So this fundraiser might want to readjust their strategy if they're trying not to have people win so often and then make the winning one of the corner holes just by looking at the probability percentages.